Time for In the Sulky Friday style here with Matt Kikeli, the uh, rising star in 2010. Matt, you've been sitting here now for a half hour, and I must have bored you to death. No, not at all. Not at all. Not at all. I like that because you got here early. You're well prepared. Uh, all set for your four drives tonight. Uh, we talked about a lot of things. Of course, uh, as I mentioned, you were the rising star in 2010. Coming off a big year, 440 wins, 6 million in purses. And the youngest driver to reach 2,000, not quite. You're at 1999, right? Yeah. I'm, I tried all week to get it done, and, you know, I just come up short. Now, you've been racing at Dover Downs, yep. and you had a lot of seconds down there? A lot of seconds this week. I can't beat Ronnie Pierce. He's always beating me. Ron Pierce? Yeah, he went like eight on Thursday, and, and, and I was second like three or four times. Corey Callahan as well. Yeah. You know, all the top drivers. What, yeah. you're the fourth leading driver down there? Yeah. Yeah, right? something like that. Now, you've got a lot of, uh, of your own posse here as well tonight. Tell us yeah. who's here with you. I you got, got my parents, and I got my girlfriend, Annie. Okay. So I got some, um, some people in my cheering section tonight. Maybe some people from Jersey Shore. I found out that you <laughs> kind of watch that once in a while. Did yeah, I watch it once in a while. A little bit. Huh? <laughs> okay, well, we'll fix that. Uh, you've paid your dues at tracks like uh, Pompano Park, Northfield Park. Uh, how important it is, is it to get that winning experience, that good, solid, young foundation, and uh, to be tutored by such experienced parents such as your dad, John, who was a great driver in Michigan, and your mother, Linda, who's a trainer? Yeah, it's big. You know, um, when your family's in it, they can teach you. You know, my dad, he's, he's done very well for himself. You know, he's won a lot of races. And, um, you know, he was a great teacher to me. He taught me a lot. Um, what did he teach you? What were some of the keys? Like, what did he... Uh, like, right in the beginning, you, you know, he, um, it was always drive with your hands first. And hands then the first. whip, you know. You don't get over aggressive with the whip. Don't get to beating him. Um, you know, that's the, the biggest key he taught me right away. Um, and as far as Northfield and Pompano, it was, it was big for me to start. Um, in Pompano, driving my mom's horses and having her support. You knew the horses, you knew the stock. Yeah, right? you know, I knew them, I trained them every day, and I jogged them every day. Then when I went to Northfield, um, you know, Ronnie Burke had horses out there, and, um, you know, I got drives from him, and then I just got drives from everybody else, started to put me up at Northfield, and, you know, it just kind of blossomed from there. That was a big key, though, meeting, what, Mickey and Ron Burke, and that kind of spearheaded your, your career early. Yeah, big right. time. You know, uh, Ronnie and all of his owners have been great to me. And with, you know, with someone like Ronnie Burke giving you a head start, you know, and giving you opportunities right away, it's big. And, um, you know, I can't thank him enough. Things really went well for you there at Northfield as well, right? Now, did you consider yourself, uh, I know it's a half-mile track, were you a conservative driver, or just do right by the horse, or were you just ultra-aggressive? Let's just um, go for at it. At Northfield, I would say I was more conservative. You know, that's how I started driving. Um, and even now, I would, I would consider myself more of a conservative driver. Um, you know, when, when the time calls to be more aggressive, I like to, but I, was, I still consider um, being Northfield. I never really got over aggressive. It's always nice to catch a break like that uh, and, and get some success under you uh, and get off to a, such a strong start. But the key is, how do you stay there? What are the keys to maintaining that consistency and perhaps taking it to the next level? Uh, just maintaining, you know, just driving and getting, um, you know, drives for everybody and uh, make sure you get work all the time. Um, Attitude as well, how you treat people? Yeah, you got to treat them good. You have to have good com good communication with everybody, which is uh, something I probably lack. But, um, you know, I mean, as long as you have success and you're doing well, it, it's going to help you out to be more confident as you go on and everything anyway. What's your schedule like now? I, obviously, you're here at the Meadowlands. Are you driving mainly at Dover and here? And yep. what are your future plans uh, Dover right now Sunday through Thursday you know and then here a little bit on the weekends um, and then as soon as Pocono opens you know I'm gonna go back there I have a house there so I'll be right back at Pocono and uh, Chester opens I'll be at Chester too and you had some great success there last year as we look back at last year uh, one of your highlights was being the top gun there right yeah that was big um, you know I got a lot of a lot of great work from a lot of great people you know not just Ronnie but um, Irv Miller used me a lot Kent Sherman uh, Jason Robinson so you know you got guys like that helping you out you know you're gonna do good and speaking of Ron Burke you got to drive you got to go back to Northfield Park and drive the big gun the big one yeah foiled again foiled again in the uh, Battle of Lake Erie yeah. tell us about that that was good um, you know I went to the Meadows earlier that day and I drove in the Adios and Limbs and then I had to drive straight there and um, you know just to get to drive foiled again anywhere is an honor and then to drive them there you know where I started at Northfield and you know, to win their big race with them, it was it was a pleasure. 
Speaking of uh, the recent success you've had, uh, it's always exciting to discover and uh, uh, pick up a talented horse and buy a piece of him as well. And that uh, being Fearless Diablo here, you actually bought into him uh, just prior to a qualifier. You warmed him up before the qualifier, a horse that kind of acts like a stud but uh, has good manners on the track. Yep. Tell us how that came about. Um, I drive a lot for those guys down there, the Claim the Fame guys and Al Kaplan. And um, I, I had to go in for qualifiers that day, and they, they asked me to train this, this uh, you know, he was a three-year-old, but it was before Christmas. And they wanted me to train him and see how I liked him. And, you know, I trained him a pretty good mile, and, you know, he felt very strong, and he had quick speed. All so right. they asked me to buy him. Well, let's uh, take a look at the uh, roll in here of uh, last week's round one of the Exit 16W. Uh, the upset came with a sterling rally. Tell, you tell us what you're thinking here. Uh, right here, I was pretty confident that I was going to win. Um, you know, the trip worked out okay. Timmy towed me up there, but um, he only got me about halfway around the turn. I had to move him three deep, but he just stormed home. Is that his game plan to come from off the helmet, off the pace? Would you like to do that again tonight? You know what? Probably because it looks like there's a lot of speed in there, but um, you know, he's good either way. He's good on the lead, like I won with him on the lead. So I don't so think I don't it really know. matters to him anyway. And of course, your major concern is not just the horse that was uh, locked in, Stonebridge Rocket, right. but the horse on that 11 race winning streak. How do you yeah. size him up? Do you think you can get to him? You know what? I don't know. You know, he's been pretty untested. He's won like, a, what, 11 in a row? Right. You know, and, um, you know, I, I, I need him to take heat no matter what for me to have any shot at him. Um, my horse has a good lick coming home. And you never know. I mean, I really, really like my horse, so we'll just have to find out. Either way, it'll be nice to get into the final and take maybe get a shot at him next week. Yeah, uh, let's uh, look at some of your other drives on the card tonight, okay. uh, starting in the fifth race, the seven. Oria Norur, uh, second start off the bench here in a very tough division of the Exit 16W. Yeah, and you know what? He qualified very well the first two weeks. Um, last week, he was just kind of flat in the lane. You know, I don't know maybe if he wasn't just ready for the mile that he had to go. Um, but he should be tighter this week, and, you know, I'm hoping for the best. Yeah, Son of Dragon again. Uh, very good record last year. Second try off the bench for Chuck Connor Jr. Uh, you're facing Sonic Dancer, Special T Rocks, who right. is very good oh, as yeah. well. So, as I said, a salty division <laughs> yeah. there. Good luck with that one. Uh, race 6, the 10 Withering Hanover has come around to race well in the Yonkers Open. Uh, what right. do you make of that horse? Have you driven that horse I've before? never driven him before. Um, you know, the 10, the 10 post is definitely a disadvantage, but, um, you know, hopefully we can get him in the mix somehow. All right, well, that's a very tough invitational, very wide open race as well, but yeah. very competitive horse. Looks like he has a bit of gate speed as well. Will you just try to uh, find out what he's all about scoring down before the yeah, race? Yeah, I'll get a feel for him and, you know, ask the trainer what he thinks of him, and, you know, we'll see. All right, and then again, of course, you got Fearless Diablo. We spoke about him. And in the uh, 11th race, the four, Cool Ashley, who drops down, owns a big kick, and uh, I think she's a long shot chance in there. I think she has a, a chance at least to get a piece of it. I think you know more about her than I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, that's going to be one of those things where you get familiar with the horse, yeah, talk definitely. to the trainer, and so on and so forth. Yep. How, how much do you uh, go by reading the racing program? you got to take a look at it just to know your competition. You can't overstudy, though, not in my opinion, because if you study too long, um, you know, you'll be expecting things to happen, and, you know, most of the time they don't go the way you think they will. So you got to have, you know, a couple plans. All right. Well, 2,000, the youngest driver to win 1,000, of course, Doug McNair eclipsed that. Right. Uh, but uh, the youngest driver to win 2,000, quite a milestone for you. Congratulations uh, beforehand. It's going to come sooner or later. <laughs> right. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, Thank Matt you. Kikaley, thanks for joining us in thanks. the sulky. We've got to cut you short, by the way. Because That's okay. Because Bob Hollywood Hayden's coming on board. And oh, yes. Yeah. He's got a lot to <laughs> say. Bob Hayden up next with uh, round two of series action as we continue with a Friday night.